Gabby's four. She has a beautiful, affectionate little personality and she loves the wiggles. She loves dancing. She loves anything with any kind of music attached to it. Uh, as a newborn, she was a regular baby. She was unfussy. She cried from time to time, um, you know, had her odd days of reflux, um, but there was nothing really that stood out as a newborn that had us concerned. Gabby wasn't reaching her developmental milestones. We noticed that more so around the six month mark that she wasn't achieving those and that we should start looking into why she wasn't achieving those. Um, it wasn't until they did a chromosome microarray um, that it flagged that there was something going on in Gabriella's genes. You know, not having a diagnosis for a child can be the most scariest uh, thing to deal with as a parent. People are often searching for answers because without an answer, it can feel very, very lonely and very, very isolating. You Google Kleefstra syndrome, um, the first things that come up is um, delayed speech, um, seizures, um, won't walk, won't talk, they're G-tube fed, in amongst a whole other list of things. When a family gets, like Vanessa, gets a rare diagnosis, they are no longer just a parent. <laughs> They're also like a care coordinator and a project manager and an advocate and a researcher. All of these jobs. There are three million people in Australia with an individually rare disease. That's more common than diabetes, but these people don't have a voice. So the idea of a multidisciplinary clinic is it wraps around the family. So all of the teams that are there for the family when they need them so they're actually getting that coordinated care, which equals much better care. Vanessa and Simon have you know, really been instrumental in, in, in showing us the value of such a clinic, actually teaching us how important this is for families. They're an amazing family. There's only so much a family can do within the medical system. I came home from work one day uh, when I swung the door open and Gabby was sort of on the other side of the room and you know, proceeded to walk slowly towards me and then started a bit of a run towards me. It was sort of like, that was one of the most memorable moments for me to really think about it, you know, to see my little girl, who we were told that would never walk, you know, run across the room to me and give me a hug, you know, when I come home from work. We have to be advocates for our daughter, you know, we're her rock, we're her foundation. We're her we're voice. Her voice, you know, when she's upset, we're the ones that understand why she's upset. Gabriella, when she walks into the, our room, or, or a room, that's our motivation each and every time. Carolyn and I have an incredibly privileged job meeting families like Vanessa and Simon and Gabby, and what you see is that they would do anything for their little girl. Um, that bond is incredible and it's not that they would want to change her in any way she's the most you know one of the most special people in their lives but they want her to have every chance and every opportunity you know and they will not stop <laughs> until they get there but in the nicest most beautiful way it's really important to advocate for these kids and to change this stigma around it's too hard where it's not too hard and these kids are as, in, as important as any other kids and so we really, really need to change that and we really need to be the reason why. Mm -hmm.